Hello world and welcome to this edition of Tech on Fire with Blaze. I'm Blaze Stewart, an architect at Winelect, and today we're going to be looking at how to set up Azure Active Directory to use Active Directory federated services to federate your logins to an external authentication provider. Hi guys, today we're looking at Azure AD Federated Services with Azure AD Connect, and this will allow us to do federation from Azure Active Directory over to an ADFS instance so that we can log on using ADFS and then be kicked back over to Azure AD. And this will allow us to authenticate using our own authentication infrastructure if we want to use it, and that's what this is for. So let's go and look at how to set this up and how it works. So federation really starts with the user and their device. So they all have something like a laptop or a phone or a tablet. They have some kind of app they're going to load up. That could be a browser based application or an install application. And the first thing they're going to do is access that application and get something on that application, such as data, a web page, whatever it might be. The app is going to ask, who are you? And they're going to either, either supply some kind of cash credentials, maybe in the form of a token, or they're going to have to log in. So the application then is going to kick them over to Azure AD. Now Azure AD has its own built-in authentication mechanisms. And so if they were to supply a username that matched one of the domains that were the default domains on Azure, the on Microsoft.com domains typically, then it would simply just log them in using that mechanism and then send them back to the application. But with federation, what you're going to do is you're going to want to delegate the logon to some other authentication service. And in the case of this, we're looking at ADFS. So what Azure AD is going to do is look at the user principal. And if they type in a principal, that's not one of the default ones. It, maybe it's a third domain, third party domain that you supply inside of AD, AD, then it's going to kick them over to ADFS. Now ADFS is you have to set up on your infrastructure structure and integrate it with AD. And then you have to connect it up to Azure AD so that Azure AD will know where to uh, redirect to that particular instance of ADFS. Now, once that is set up, then the user will then be re redirected to a page that is served up by ADFS. And then ADFS will see that user and then they will uh, log them in with whatever credentials they supply, or maybe you have 2FA turned on or something like that. Once that's turned on, then the ADFS service will then kick them back over to AD or Azure Active Directory, and it will say, okay, they're authenticated and it'll provide the claims, etc. And then Azure AD will then see that claim and then it will generate the claim that is needed for the actual application and then it will send that back to the app and then the app receives that claim and says okay you're authenticated here's your user's claims that's the user properties on that particular user username uh, maybe where they're located those kinds of information and then once it sees they're authenticated it will then serve up the data that they need and then kick it back over to the user on their device and that is how this flow works so what we have to do for all this to work is integrate our ADFS environment with Azure AD Connect because we're doing this against our Azure AD Connect that we already have set up. And I will link to a video on how to do that in the, in the description below. So you can check out how to set up Azure AD Connect and then we're going to set up ADFS today to uh, work with that. Okay, the first thing we're going to do here is set up ADFS. So to do this, I'm just going to use the server manager. You can do this through the actual utilities for AD uh, Connect. I prefer to use the server manager to do this because I, I like to set this up independently of Azure AD uh, Connect so that I can kind of get a little bit more uh, control over what I really want to do with it. In any case, it's fairly easy to do. Just simply run through this wizard here to add a feature. You, ch you know, check ADFS. Uh, run through this. You don't have to really do anything except the defaults. And then if it requires restart, restart it and then install the feature. And then we'll come back when that's done. Okay. Now that I have it installed, you can simply go to ADFS inside of your server manager, click this more link right here, and then configure it uh, using that link. And it's going to launch this wizard right here. And it's going to give you some options here. You can say 
create a new server form, which is what I'm going to opt for, or you can add it to an existing server form. And notice it says right here, it says using it to configure O365, exit this wizard and use Azure Active Directory Connect. You can do that if you want to. I prefer to do it this way than add it later in because this is uh, my preferred way to do it because you get a little bit more fine grain control over it, but you can use Azure AD Connect. Either way is a valid approach. I'm gonna go with this one and just create a new server form here. Um, I'm gonna log into my local Active Directory using my administrator account right here. Uh, you can use any administrator account for this as long as it has the appropriate permissions for the particular um, Active Directory that you're using. And next thing I need to do is get a certificate for this. Um, I generated a certificate for this domain. It's a wildcard certificate. Uh, so it would work for any of the purposes that I'm using for it. And it's a wildcard certificate for blaze at XYZ. So any domain would work with that. Um, and I have to put in a password to uh, unlock it. Um, you can use let's encrypt or any other um, one of those um, free ones, or you could use uh, a commercial service as well, if I can remember the password for this. There it is. Okay. Now for the federated services, you want to put in a domain name that isn't a wildcard. So I'm going to use adfs.blaze.xyz. And this is just the display name. So it doesn't really matter what you put in here. I'm going to say blaze, um, blaze network right here. And uh, this, this right here just needs to be some domain that you're going to be using to set this up. So this is where Azure Active Directory is going to redirect to whenever you log in. And so let's go ahead and put an adfs.blaze.xyz here. And I need to use an existing account here or I can create, uh, doesn't let me create one here. I'm simply just going to use an administrator here as well. Um, and uh, use this for a demo. I don't know that you'd want to use this for production, but uh, for a demo like this, it's fine. And then I'm going to log in with that. And then next thing you need to specify a database. If you want to use SQL Server, you can do that, or you can, uh, this might be better for a larger domain uh, or a lot, with a lot of activity. You can use a local database as well. And it's uh, not as performant, but it'll get you by if you have a smaller domain. So something to consider there. Um, and then once you can go through these options, it's going to val validate them and then you can install it. So let's wait for it to validate. So it looks like everything's good to go here. Let's go through next and it's going to do a prerequisite test. And, um, once this is done, we can then click configure and then it will just start the installation of this and we'll be good to go. As soon as this is done, we'll come back. Okay. It looks like everything was successfully configured. So let's close this out and it looks like our server is ready to go. So I can close out ADFS here and let's go ahead and configure AD connect Azure AD connect right here. Okay. I'm gonna launch Azure AD connect and we're going to launch the configuration for this. So I'm going to click configure force. And then the first thing I need to do is click on manage federation right here. And the first thing you can do right here, there's a lot of options here. You can view the current configuration. If you have one, manage the trust. There's a lot of things you can do here. Our basic thing that we want to do here though, is go to manage services first, and then we're going to, uh, then federate Azure a AD domain right here. So let's go to manage services first, and I'm going to not deploy ADFS server. I want to specify primary server for currently configured farms. So this is the one that if you install it independently, this is the one that you will set up for a currently configured farm. That's what we walked through just a minute ago when we added the certificate in and all of that. So I'm going to select that option. And this thing is going to walk me through, uh, the connection to my local ADFS here. So I'm going to go log onto this and go to, uh, administrator. And this is the local administrator. And, um, And then it's going to ask me for the IP address of my server, which is uh, actually the local box here. And so I'm going to click add to that and then it's going to validate connectivity. And then once I have that, I'm going to click exit. Next thing I'm going to do then is launch Azure AD connect one more time. And once I have the server ready to go, I can come back in here to manage federation again, and then I'm going to click federate Azure AD domain and click next. And then this is going to ask me to log on to Azure AD right here. So this is a global administrator on Azure AD. So you need to have a global administrator right here. And then it's going to uh, ask me to 
connect it to ADFS, which I'm going to simply supply my administrator account here and log on with this to this. And then it's going to ask me to pick the domains I want, which is blaze.xyz. And notice what it's saying here. It says blaze.xyz domain is federated with this one. It's going to be updated. It's already did this. Um, I'm basically just going to run this wizard again. Um, it's the exact same wizard though, if you were doing it for the very first time. So let's let this configure and we'll come back when it's finished. Oh, that happened really fast. And so let's just go ahead and hit configure and let that do its thing. Okay. Now that this is done, I'm going to click exit. Okay. I'm going to get out of my remote desktop and bring in a new tab over here to, uh, get into the Azure portal. Let's go over to portal.azure.com and let's take a look at a Azure active directory now and the AD connect settings that I have configured for this. So here I have my Azure AD Connect settings configured. You can see here at Federation turned on for one domain and that's the blaze.xyz domain. So that means that I will log on using ADFS for this particular domain. But if I was to use the other domains that I have right here, blaze.onmicrosoft.com, that would just use the standard AD logon schemes that I have available there. So let's try this. Let's go ahead and get our Azure AD Connect login. And I'm going to do that from the users here. And so the users I could use to log on with this are Blaze Admin at blaze.xyz, uh, blaze test.xyz, and new user. So I'm going to select this one right here. And let's get a new incognito window. And I'm going to uh, go to the portal and use that as the application that's going to be federated. So the, the portal, it would be the application that I want to authenticate using Azure AD. I could use a custom app or Office 365. They all kind of work the same, but I'm going to be using uh, the Azure portal as my example here. So let's go ahead and put that principle in, and I'm going to take over to my applications log on page or my organization's login page. Now this is actually running on my local infrastructure here because this is running on a server or a virtual machine that's sitting five feet from me. And so the domain I had to set up to use the IP address for uh, my server right here, my external IP address, and I had to configure some DNS settings to get all this to work as well as um, update my you know IP address for this particular domain as well. But once I have all that working, then you can log into this. So all that infrastructure is there, everything works, and I can just log in here. That's some things that you'll have to take care of, but that's going to vary depending on your infrastructure. So let's see if I can get this one's password right um, and try and sign on. I got the password incorrect. This is logging into a local box. So this actually should work pretty fast. Now it's going to redirect me back over to Microsoft. Notice the domain changed up here to logon.microsoft.com. Now I'm back on Azure. So the authentication was successful against my local environment. Now I'm back on Azure and um, for logging on to Microsoft. And now it's going to kick me over to the Azure portal because the authentication worked. And so now I'm logged in to the Azure portal using that user that authenticated against my local ADFS instance here. So that's how Federation works. It's fairly straightforward and it's fairly straightforward to set up as well. So nothing hard if you want to use that. The reason you'd want to use it is so that your passwords aren't stored on Azure. You can use it to authenticate users without having to sync your passwords back and forth to Azure. So that's kind of one of the reasons folks would want to use something like ADFS to log into their applications. So stay tuned for more videos related to security that we're going to be doing inside of this uh, continuing series on security. We're going to be looking at other features in Azure and Azure AD that are related to security in the future. So thanks for watching. If you like this content, please consider visiting us online at www.wintelect.com. And there you can find about services that Wintelect offers, including training and consulting services. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel by clicking on the subscribe button and clicking the bell icon to get notifications when new content becomes available and also comment down below. You can also follow me on Twitter at the one mule and also follow Wintelect on Twitter at Wintelect now or at Wintelect. We are constantly posting things about Azure related technologies and things related to software development. You can also reach us by email at consulting at Until next time, thank you.